to you guys for popping by and of course i have to have to thank my new subscribers for subscribing i really do appreciate you guys honestly i was not expecting my channel to grow um so quickly in my opinion and i really do appreciate it slowly but surely we're gonna get there okay to the thousands and all of that so yeah i'm really excited and i'm glad that i officially started my channel i'm really excited so yeah let's jump right into it so yes i'm gonna tell you guys about my labor delivery story time um I did want to tell you guys a story time of how I told my parents, but I really don't feel like it was that interesting. So I just felt like I'll skip it. So yeah, that's why we are here and I'm here to tell you guys my delivery time. So the interesting thing about my story is that guys, I delivered my child with no um, epidural, no medication nothing it was a natural birth every i felt young kinto young kinto yo hey i thought i was dying but i'm here aren't i when i fell pregnant basically i um it was a year where it was a year right after where my father was like he lost his job basically he got yeah he lost it was the the end of his job term so basically he didn't have a job when i was pregnant at that time so obviously with that being said that meant that um we didn't have medical aid yes in guys i've always listened to some medical aid for years you have medical aid and then this one year in jail, they're not even gonna say yes in because you've been paying for all these years and you've never really used medical aid how about in your no high and try anyway so since he lost his job and all of that um we didn't have medical aid and and another thing i was already doing my last year in university and i was above 21 so even with my last when i was above 21 basically i could use the fact that i was still in varsity as proof of registration so now besides the fact that my dad didn't have medical aid now i was also um now basically i was also in a state where i finished studying i'm not in varsity anymore so i'm an adult i'm supposed to be working so i'm on my own basically so fast forward this basically led to me having to do everything via the public system yo guys i will not tell you probably um it was one of the toughest times because i'm a very anxious person um i get worried a lot i'm a like in <laughs> so i was very worried basically and i think also you know with um for the longest time if you've always had medical aid if you've always been secured in a sense and now that i officially had like a medical thing that i had to deal with all of a sudden i don't have medical aid i had to get used to the fact that i'm going to go to a public clinic at every day and yo guys but anyway let's not get right deep into that it happened so yeah i think even though it was very hard and nerve-wracking and all of that i also genuinely really had support from um people in my life so yeah basically, let's talk about the labor so basically what happened was my child oh i was so tired i think when i was close to my labor day i was honestly over it and i had gang false labor well just one false labor where i was admitted in the hospital for a weekend and <laughs> and it was the public hospital okay so i had to go to the hospital for like the weekend because i thought i was in labor only to realize that sis was not in labor so um and with public hospitals basically the ghetto if you are admitted let's just say on friday i think i was admitted like on friday and then I, and then we realized that okay i'm not in labor but I, already, but I was already admitted but the only way i could leave the hospital is if a doctor checks me and they're like okay she's not really in labor and then a doctor needs to discharge you but then again doctors would only discharge people on monday hey guys so for the first time in my life i was in a public hospital for the whole damn weekend is it the baby is born okay not as in like scary things or whatever but funny things also in a sense so um i think 
like it was a funny experience um so yeah so i had to stay there um for the weekend and then i remember um, my, my my the doctor after they checked me and all of that on monday and then they had to discharge me and they were like if i do not if i ginga be in labor ginga gain into labor within i don't know they gave me the date basically i don't remember they gave me the date and they were like if i go in labor by this date because i was like over to you now they're like i need to come back and they're gonna induce my labor basically so all right cool and another thing basically which made me um deliver naturally with nothing no medication nothing was because i was not a high risk um pre i didn't have a high risk pregnancy like i was healthy my baby was healthy um so yeah basically and i remember okay even though i went to um a, a, a clinic a public clinic i would also go to a doctor like i did go to a doctor um like a private doctor but obviously you'd have to pay cash for that so i remember my doctor was like no um my baby was just too big and it was, was just too big um there's no way i was going to deliver naturally and that made me so nervous but when i'd go to the clinic the nurses would just be like you are fine sis you're gonna deliver naturally okay and and the doctor would be like you so short your feet are small hey, hey, hey all of these things your baby's big and you know so i think those are all the things that added to the stress and all of that but i, I think with my family and um people that care about me with them knowing that i'm a very anxious person and all of that they would really help me out and and i think another thing that helped me out was basically the father of my child was very supportive and he's more calm and he knows that i'm more like you know so that would be helpful like if i overthink things it would be like no you just need to calm down you know type of a thing so that was very helpful um so yeah so and I, so what happened was right after that i went home so i went back home i was so happy to go back home so the hospital was very close to home basically so i went back home a day later the next like i think a day went by and then the next day basically what happened was actually i woke up and i got um a little bit of spotting it was like 4 a.m but i wasn't feeling anything like it was just spotting and i was like okay spotting whatever um went back to bed changed cleaned myself went back to bed um yeah i wasn't feeling anything and then i think um the went just the day went by i think around 12 o'clock during the day like 12 before one um so i tell them at home i'm like hey you know this happened in the morning and they're like what do you mean and i was like oh yeah this happened this morning at like 4 a.m and they're like you're still here and you didn't tell us what do you mean and then i was like but i can't feel anything and they're like no sis the fact that that happened it means it's time like it's leading to that time so i was like honestly i don't know anymore because the last weekend i thought i was a neighbor but i wasn't so i do not know anymore so at home they're like no listen we're driving you to the hospital get ready take your bag because i packed my bag hospital i packed my baby's bag and all of that so i packed my bags everything everything we went to the hospital i think lucky for me that something that was very comforting for me was the fact that my aunt worked at that hospital so even though like even the weekend when i was admitted there like it wasn't really entirely like stressful or whatever because i knew she was there she would bring me food and it was closer to home so even my 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 my, my family would bring me food and all of that because the food in the public hospital is disgusting okay it's disgusting <laughs> so yeah so that was a bit like more comforting so and then um so yeah that happened right and then with that happening so we go to the hospital so when we get to the hospital right we get there so now the nurses know me and they're like she's back <laughs> and now i'm like but I'm, I'm in labor and this is what happened i tell them so i remember when we were driving to the hospital like i think the movement of the car i was starting to feel some form of like pain but not that much like a little bit of pain but it wasn't that deep and it almost felt like period pain you know 
Honestly, and another thing, guys, people who tell you Uguti labor pain is like a period pain, but a manga. Yay, that thing is on another level. Ila, a period pain, a lot. My period pain, a lot. That thing. Anyway, so yeah. So I go, we go basically to the hospital. The nurses check me, obviously. I hate that part. They check you and all of that, and they have to check you with their finger and blah, 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 blah. TMI. Is it TMI? What do you say? Two and yeah, I don't know if it's TMI, but I think I'm giving you guys more information. But anyway, so they check you. So when they check me, basically, my nurse checks me and she's like, she's not dilated. So they're like, you're not dilated, you're not in labor. I'm like, hey, man, do less. Clearly, when you're about to give birth the first time, you definitely do not know because I kept on thinking, good, I'm in labor, and this is. So I'm like, at this point, listen, I don't even know anymore. Like, I'm sad. They're like, no, you're not in labor. I'm like, okay. <laughs> anyway, I sit there and my aunt is like, listen, she said this is what happened, what, 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 not, what not. I feel like she needs to be admitted. So, and another thing, guys, in a public hospital, you wait until you are they to tell you it's okay, we're admitting it, you, and then you have to change, and they take you to the ward and everything. And <laughs> yeah, so I waited, I waited, and my aunt was like, No, just admit her. I know she said she's in labor, so she's definitely in labor. And they were like, Hi, bo, when I'm in Ghana, I'm in she's not in labor. Oh my god anyway yeah so eventually time went on they admitted me um i changed um did everything that i had to do admin work signing blah 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 the list is long so um yeah then i go in the ward and i lay there with every other people every other person that's waiting to deliver and stuff so as i was waiting basically this male nurse comes by and he just greets me so he's checking on each and every patient so he asked me like what's going on so i was like this is what happened but the sisters were like i'm not in labor but this is what happened earlier on so he's like okay let me check you so i will not like as i do feel like male nurses are more nicer and more they are really nicer and they really do take care of you more than the female nurses i mean it sounds bad but that was my experience so he's like let me check you and yeah so yeah we did that and he checks me he's like you are dilated it's just that you are not you about like one centimeter like it's not you, you it's, it's a bit still too far so i was like okay i was happy like you guys do not understand i was so happy because i was like let me get this baby out like i was really i was so tired of being pregnant okay i was tired i was you tired basically so um he's like okay cool you definitely never are so happy i call my family calls with his dad i'm like listen i'm in labor <laughs> it's happening i was so excited okay cool another thing right so in a public hospital you have the one ward or well, the hospital i was in it's like a whole okay the one thing i like about it is that it was very secluded and far from like the sick people and all of that so you are not traumatized in that department and the hospital that i was in it was very clean um i must i must say it was definitely clean because i know a lot of people complain about um hospitals public hospitals being very dirty but in my experience it was very clean okay so yeah so but the very scary thing is that you, this side before you're waiting to deliver right you sit right in a different ward and then they 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 back home be so basically to the other one so whatever's happening in the other ward you can hear it so everyone that's screaming i want to have a scream i want to have a hey 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 i want to have a hey you hear everything and imagine that hearing people screaming and shouting for their mothers and because that baby is killing them and you're hearing and you know what i am next slowly but surely yo guys i think that just makes the situation like even like <sighs> yep anyway so yeah you're just hearing that he really 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 traumatizes you like <laughs> that thing traumatized me anyway so um 
you wait um so i waited i waited right so i think it was like two o'clock three o'clock i was still feeling like period pains nyana and then quasi four o'clock like 4 p.m right <laughs> 4 p.m gosh oh four i sing years oh man sing years i sing years <laughs> years it's not period pains anymore no like so at that time the contractions were coming and going coming and going coming and going type of a thing um so what i like about that phase is that you get a chance to like breathe like you get a chance like it will come and then so like i mean it holds you and you're like damn i'm dying and then it leaves you so that's how contractions are it's like you know and then obviously as time goes by i think as okay i think around about six or whatever it was like dinner time and you obviously have to eat and all of that Akaya, they came they brought me food again so i didn't have to eat the food at the hospital um and yeah so basically so I remember I was talking to one of my friends, right? And um, she ha also has a baby. So I'm busy talking to her like I'm in labor. She's like, if you're still texting, sissy, you're not in labor yet. I'm like, what do you mean, sis? This is painful. <laughs> you mean it's going to get worse? How? Because <laughs> I, I was dying. <laughs> anyway. Uh, so, um, six, right about six, seven. Yeah, I won't have a seven, right? I can then I couldn't do anything like so you have to wait you have to stand um walk around and just the contraction right it holds you it holds you and then it leaves you and then you're like and then you have to keep walking so in order to also um go to sheshi so the labor or whatever you have to like um keep walking around and all of that so another thing that helped me was that the night the night nurse who was there in that night basically in the delivery ward was another relative of mine like another aunt of mine so i was lucky in that department so she really took care of me and she kept on checking up on me checking how far dilated i am um and she would she gave me this other injection i think twice because she was like to me yo um then i'm like this baby is gonna kill you okay every time she checked me she's like this baby is gonna kill you and she'd explain why and all of that and she was like she gave me this other injection like two she gave them she gave them she gave me those injections twice basically she was like i need to help you um um move this um labor quickly because if you're gonna be in labor till the next day so let me just help you and yeah so she gave me these injections it was not injections for pain for helping the pain or easing the pain no i don't know what it was for but obviously it was my family like it was my relative i trusted her so i was okay with it um so she did that she gave me the injection and i think she gave me the first one like round about nine one check and she was like no i need to give you this injection oh guys yeah well i will have eight nine <laughs> you 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 <laughs> never felt anything like that i can't even i can't even explain it i'm not even gonna try to explain it because i cannot explain it and then whoo, and then 9 11 gosh 11 and she was like okay yazin you are very close i think before 10 she gave me another injection and then before it like 11 o'clock at night um oh that time years and years and ngamuza she called the other sister and she was like okay already um oh yes i'm managing up so i had to go to the delivery section where i have to go and deliver in the delivery ward guys you do not understand how happy i was because i felt like okay this is the end of the road this is where it ends this is where basically i give birth and and i am just free of this pain can't you know He's a kala. <laughs> Yo, hey. I go. <laughs> oh, hi. Kati is a 
Takala, Homa, I will. And then I got to the other ones. When I get to the one, it was so painful, guys. Nah, it was so painful to a point where I thought, good, I'm ready. Okay, for me, well, my water didn't break, right? So they had to break my water. Hmm. So I get to the other side. I'm thinking when I get there, basically, they're going to be like, okay, let's get this going. I get there. That time I'm dying, guys. I get there. They're like, okay. But it's like, she's giving her my information, how far I am and all of that. She's like, okay. She is seven centimeters. That Wait, she is seven centimeters. I'm like seven. I'm gonna ten. You? Ah, no, no, no. Ah, you. I'm like 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 deliver um deliver my baby right she was very nice and very sweet and even my my relative my aunt she told me she was like listen with um people always complain about nurses right but the thing with nurses is that most people don't listen to nurses so when you don't listen to nurses eventually you're also gonna have a hard time and even my delivery nurse she was like listen if you just listen to me if i say do this do it we're gonna be fine you're gonna have a smooth delivery like we're not gonna fight so i beg you to just listen to me and cooperate so that's what i did basically hey guys let me tell you something from 12 o'clock at night i gave birth to my child at half past five in the morning those five hours and 30 minutes <laughs> i'll never forget them I will never forget them ever, ever. <laughs> I will. <gasps> you know, after then, after seven centimeters, right? Imagine it took me five hours to get to ten. From seven centimeters to th it gave three centimeters. It took me five hours to get to three ten centimeters. Bese ngifa, guys. You you don't know what to do, right? I was no musale, no musugume, or oh okay, or gijime, or you don't know whether to cry or to not cry or to laugh, guys. I can there's nothing I did not do. It's like you're losing your mind. And I was walking up and down. I'd go to the toilet. The nurses would be like, hey, hey, don't go to the toilet because toilet. But now it felt like I needed to go to the toilet, but I didn't. I get to the toilet and nothing would happen. And I'm just like, Hey. Okay, obviously I was like, I don't know her name then. Yeah, okay, so and wow guys, wow. You walk, guys. There is nothing I did not do. I prayed. I did. I said affirmations. National Bible verses. I remember the Bible verse. I said, "I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me." I was praying. I did everything. I was motivating myself. I was telling myself, "I can do this." And let me tell you something. You know, that's the funny thing. The whole time you are walking up and down, we are like, we are so good, you're losing your mind. We are like, oh, sister, back on. They're sitting, sipping on some coffee because I remember it was May, so it was cold. They're sitting, sipping on some coffee, chatting, kumnandi, just waiting for your moment. Hey, guys. La pongiafa. Walking up and down, I'm walking up and down, I'm sitting down, I'm shaking, I'm moving my legs. Good hang dance, good guys. I'm not even lying. That thing is painful. Yo, good thing you're getting pinned. Hey, this one of the nurses, she's like, We are shaking. She's like, Hmm, Zondo, we are so good to go shung, eh? Go shung, eh? Uzo pinned. Uzo pinned, eh? I'm like, Neng pinned, Neng pinned. I say, after that, I was just like, There's no way I'm doing this thing ever again. Like, what? Yo, I guess. Yo, that thing was painful. And then, obviously, I think as time went by, like after 12, and then, listen, I was like, Yes, in Kupshung, ne? 
and then eventually the nurse is like low damyang check and then there's also these other belts about faga lana look at checking gani had beats none none of contractions ah that thing is annoying okay um and then the nurses my nurse basically she so she was like okay get on the bed lala man i'm thinking this is it i'm like so this cat she's like no i need to break your water because amanzako will, won't break so we need to break your water she breaks my water <laughs> she broke my water listen when your water breaks right so when she broke my water i got all i was shivering i was so cold um it was crazy right and she broke my water oh guys the pain like i, I can't even ex i said it i can't i thought i had seen the worst but that was not the worst and now the worst part about it is that now when you're closer from eight to ten um centimeters right and you're closer to being nine i think even getting to ten from nine was just the longest ever and that time the contractions the pain did not stop for hours like I bought guys for hours guys I got show you five fixing it did not stop like did not stop did not stop he I was walking up and down shaking doing this thing that thing that eventually um after I think it was like number five and for me it was like number five maybe quarter past five or whatever probably closer to that my sister's like okay wasn't bit then um it's time to push oh my goodness guys i was so happy and went there laid on the bed and we pushed okay so for me my pushing was not hard it didn't i probably pushed for like five minutes i don't remember but it was so quick it was not hard for me and my nurses were very helpful and yeah like i think it was just like a few minutes and basically my baby was out and i remember before that i kept on asking the nurse i was like can the sister is open in like when is the pain gonna stop and she'd be like is open once it kind of if she's still in there like just you know just <laughs> you guys yo i so yeah so at half past five i eventually gave birth to my baby after he the longest hours that felt like the longest hours ever so eventually basically then they had to stitch me up and all of that and i remember when they had to stitch me up even though everything was just natural obviously you do um um you, you had they have to stitch you and all of that so i remember the nurse was like to me okay this is the most hurtful part this is the most painful part of the whole thing is the stitching part and i was like to her really guys let me tell you something i had experienced so much pain for me stitching was not painful at all like and i could hear her do everything but basically i'm because i felt like i had felt it all all of it you know all of it so yeah at half past five on 13 may it was mother's day that year in 2018 i gave birth to my baby girl Uzubuya, Tingulinkosi, Mama Faso. yeah that is my baby my delivery story um of how i gave birth guys it was hell <laughs> it was hell so yeah i really hope that um you guys did enjoy my story time and that you guys did enjoy this video i really did enjoy telling you guys all about my delivery time and how i gave birth to my baby so i'd also really like to know if i do have any mothers or anything like that who are interested in this whole because i do kind of feel like this is almost like a mother series type of a thing you know um so yeah if we could just keep chatting i don't know what really mothers talk about on youtube Angazi. but anyway just if you guys really do enjoy these sit down videos please do comment down below and just let me know if you do enjoy these kind of videos so yeah thank you so much for watching thank you thank you thank you i really do appreciate you guys and please do not forget to comment like subscribe and share this video if of course you do enjoy it you did enjoy it 
um so yeah thank you so much but most importantly please do not forget to stay beautiful